Hey guys, I'm so glad you joined me today, and I want to remind you of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Paul the Apostle said, finally, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Get your strength from him, get your confidence from him, get your faith building boost from him. Put on the full armor of God, look at this, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle, our battle, our fight is not against flesh and blood. Our fight as, a, as Jesus followers ultimately isn't in the realms of geopolitical, it isn't in the realms of, of uh, all, all the levels we see uh, in, in, with people. Uh, and it's not a human battle. Though we live an earthly life, we don't wage a, a, an earthly war. It says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Here it says, our battle is not against flesh and blood, our struggle. We have a struggle, but it's not against flesh and blood. But against the rulers, powers, world forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, because they're in heavenly places, these are... Uh, in the exegesis at what you'd call this, of, of, of interpreting the scripture, clearly he's referring to evil spirits because he's talking about the devil, and then he's talking about these ranks. So these ranks aren't good angels, and nor are these ranks rankings of government leadership in the human because it says it's not against uh, flesh and blood. So the, the, these references are not flesh and blood. I heard a guy on the radio the other day talk about this like, this referenced uh, uh, human leadership and, and a human level. Well, no, you have to look at the context. I disagree with your conclusion. A really brilliant man and sounded sweet, but I disagreed with him. And, you know, we have to rightly divide the word, don't we? And even, you know, what I say to you, you got to go back to the word and check on it. I'm a human, so a human can make a mistake. That, that guy's a human, and he can make a mistake. A lot of what he said was on point. I disagreed with that. This is about spiritual beings. So we need to pick our fight, pick our fights. And uh, it's really not with people. It's with evil spirits behind the scenes, evil disembodied beings. Now, this may sound to you like hocus pocus, but Jesus dealt with demons over and over again in his earthly ministry. And if it was just imaginary or if it was just mental problems, he would say that it was imaginary or it was mental problems. But like one being said, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he, they asked if he'd cast them out to the end of the pigs. I mean, read it for yourself. That's not allegory. That's not just make-believe. That's not superstition, nor is it mythology. That's biblical history. That happened with Jesus. And it says... Uh, in Mark chapter 16, these signs will follow those who believe, and it says they'll cast out demons. So, I mean, there's that. And then we've got movies like The Exorcist. I'm from St. Louis now, and that was actually a reference to a literal happening here in, in St. Louis. Um, and there's all kinds of st gilding around a lot of these things, but I've been in nations where people writhing, and I, I, in fact, my nation, at Westport Plaza in St. Louis, Guy laying on the floor. Now you could say, well, was he having an epileptic seizure? Was he, did he take his too many meds? It was demonic. Um, well, uh, who are you to say that? I was there. The security guard at the place where I went with my wife, who actually asked us not to witness to people, he didn't want us to talk to people about Jesus there. When he saw this guy, he came and got us. He said, would you please help me? He knew it was out of his realm, uh, you know, uh, as a security guard. And, and he thought, all of a sudden, it, he pivoted, and he thought, these spiritual, these people, they may have something we need right here. And sure enough, God did do something great and set that person free. Listen, um, we put on the full armor of God. We fight the good fight of faith. And so 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, it says, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory. There's not enough emphasis on honor, and there's not enough awareness of glory. To him be the honor, to him be the glory. Forever and ever, amen. I have a friend, Randy Travis, music, amazing musician, amazing. And he 
one of, I think, his biggest hits was uh, Forever and Ever, Amen. There's, there it is right there. Forever and Ever. He said, I'm going to love you forever. It's a beautiful romance song. This is a romance from God telling us to be on point and understand how, he, how immortal he is, how invisible he is, how he's the only wise God. He's the only way to go, right? And then it says here, this command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son. This is Paul speaking to his protege, Timothy, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, what the words and the prophecies and the prayers and, and things that he got, that by them you may fight the good fight. In other words, in our arsenal, uh, God has given us the more sure word of prophecy, which is the word of God, and it is uh, according to uh, Ephesians 6 later on, it says the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And that that is that is the only weaponry in our arsenal that is actually offense on, on the offense. It's an offensive weapon. Uh, a sword is, is to advance. The shield protects, the breastplate protects, the helmet protects. Those are defense elements. And thank God we have good defense. Thank God for defense, but also thank God we have the word to advance. We speak the word. We command the enemy to move. We take our place. Devil, get off of our family. Get off of my marriage. Get off of my children. I rebuke you, deceiver. Since God is not the God of confusion, I come against that confusion over our lives, over our, our, our work, over our moment we're in, over our nation and the nation's. And God, I pray for crystal clear revelation to come and that by them you may fight the good fight of faith. By the, what? By the words, the prophecies. Take what God has spoken to you and use those truths to fight against discouragement. Take what God's word, you know, the reason when I preach or teach in my, in my moment at, at our, as a pastor in church, or even in these moments, the reason I go to the scriptures is you really don't need me quoting from periodicals or what I Googled and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, some of that is good to tie th ideas together and to paint word pictures or to give uh, reinforcing stories. But I'm telling you, it's all to get back to the word of God. And the, 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 the occasions where a, a, a God gives you a directive, man, use that to fight the good fight of faith. There are things God has spoken over me and to me um, through faithful, competent voices in meetings or prayer or conversation. And just there, I, I, I've written them down and I treasure them. And I, but I'm grateful that. Peter and James and Paul and John and Moses and David wrote, inspired by the Holy Spirit, God's holy word, and so that we can fight the good fight. I pray whatever you're facing, find it in the word, find the promises of God, take your stand. Having done everything to stand firm, stand firm and fight the good fight of faith. God bless you.